let's get a sense of what Pi System Trade can do. We'll need some price data. Pi System Trade comes with some pre baked data. We access it below from sysdata. Blah, blah, blah. Import CSV futures sim data and assign that to data. And it turns out CSV futures sim data is an object with 99 instruments. I want to know more about the methods associated with this object. So I run data.methods and I get a bunch of methods such as get fx for instrument, get raw price, etc. As shown above, there are a bunch of methods available. For convenience, I have listed many of them below. I've tried to organize them a bit into four buckets, whereby bucket one refers to methods that return instrument names or asset class names, such as get instrument list, all asset classes. To kick off, I'm going to explore each of the methods that return instrument names or asset class names, in other words, bucket one. We start with dot keys method. This method is described as returning a list of instruments in this data set. So my prediction is it will return a list of 99 instruments. And indeed it does. And there are in fact 99 of them. Note the instrument names here don't reflect the official futures exchange naming conventions, but they are intuitive. For example, live cow, appears in this list in place of live cattle as the futures exchange would know it. Some of them I'm less sure about. For example, mummy appears in this list. I don't know what that is. Let's take a look at the method get instrument list. Apparently it returns a list of instruments in this data set and it actually does exactly the same thing as dot keys. Exactly the same as above. Let's take a look at the method get instrument asset classes. Apparently it returns a pandas series where row names are instruments and the content is their asset classes. Aluminium equals metals, AU Aussie dollar equals FX and so on. Interestingly, there are 270 rows. I expected this series to have length 99, but in fact it has 270. I noticed this list includes wheat and wheat mini, for example, whereas the get instrument list, which was only 99 long, only contained wheat. So that maybe is a, an example of a reason why th this particular list is longer. I presume this method is extracting data from a more extensive data source versus get instrument list. Let's look now at the method all asset classes. My prediction is this method will produce a list of asset classes, maybe 10 or so. And actually there are 11. Let's look at the method all instruments in asset class. I would expect the following line of code to list all the agriculture instruments in our data set. Data dot all instruments in asset class ags seems to do just that live cow milk i noticed that that list is drawn from the instrument list that had length of 99 not from the instrument list that had length 270. let's look at the method asset class for instrument the asset class for instrument euro stocks is equity so this works as you'd expect. In summary, those methods are intuitive, perhaps with the slight caveat that get instrument asset classes refers to 270 instruments, whereas perhaps we were expecting 99, as is the case with the other methods. Bucket number two, methods that return prices. Let's look at the method get raw price. Apparently this is the default method to get instrument price at its natural frequency. What exactly is the natural frequency? It would appear that this method is simply returning all the price data available for a given instrument, regardless of the time of day the price was recorded. So for Euro stocks, we have price data from the 30th of September at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., etc. Technical note, 
Rob's blog states that these prices are back adjusted using the Panama stitching method. Let's look at the method get raw price from start date. Presumably this does exactly the same thing as above, but starting from the start date we specify. That's exactly what it does. 30th of September, 1800 hours. So it is. By the way, if I changed this to 1801, which actually doesn't exist in the data set, Python rounds up automatically and starts from the next available start date, which was 1900 hours. Let's look at the method daily prices. Apparently it returns daily prices. Well, from this data set up here, I could see that the last price on the 6th of October at 1900 hours was 4021. So I predict that the daily price for 6th of October will be reported as 4021. And for, 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 for the 5th of October, I'm predicting 4042.5. Because that's the la that is the last price, although that was recorded at 2100 hours. Four zero four two point five four zero two one. So my prediction is right. This method, daily prices, seems to be taking whatever the last price is for a given day in your data set. I'm not sure it's necessarily the price that would formally be regarded as the closing price, however. So that's something I'm making a mental note of for future reference. In other words, if my data set happened to have the last price in Eurostocks on the 6th of October as 13 minutes past seven and the price was 4040. I'm guessing that this this method daily prices will show that ta that price at 13 minutes past seven because it just assumes that that's the la it's the last price. But I'm, I'm, my point is it's not necessarily the closing price. I'm not sure. Let's look at the method get multiple prices. Unfortunately for now, I don't really know what to, to make of this. We have a carry column, carry contract, price, price contract, forward, forward contract. Presumably this method relates to the carry strategy as per Rob's books. Let's look at the method, get multiple prices from start date. It does exactly the same as above. But from a start date we specify. Let's look at the method get back adjusted futures price. I'm not sure how this will be any different from get raw price because Rob's blog states get raw price uses back adjusted prices for futures instruments, which just seems to be the, the very same as this method. I tested that theory that they are basically the same methods by assigning the Euro stocks back adjusted futures price to X and the Euro stocks raw price to Y. X is equal to Y. It's all, it always seems to be true. So if your analysis is focused on futures, then it would appear to me at least that get raw price does the same as get back adjusted futures price. Let's look at the method get current and forward price data. The data returned would enable you to manually create a back adjusted price series. Presumably you'd apply the Panama stitching method, price forward, price contract, forward contract. I noticed this method returns the same data as the method we looked at earlier, get multiple prices, except this method contains only four columns, whereas that other method additionally contained columns for carry and carry contract. So in summary, the methods in this bucket are pretty intuitive, although for the moment I don't really understand what all of them are used for. Hopefully that understanding comes later. Bucket three, methods that tell me something about the data for a given instrument. Let's look at the method length of history in days for instrument. I am expecting that the length of history in days for instrument Eurostock will be around about 2000. 
because the Eurostox price data set starts in 2014 and ends in October 2021. And that's eight years, approximately 2,000 days. And the answer is 1975. So this is doing what you think it does, just what it says on the tin. Let's look at the method start date for data. It returns mm, this. I'm sure this method serves a purpose, but at the moment I don't know what that purpose is. Bucket four methods that describe some of the technical aspects of a given instrument. Let's look at the method get role parameters. Data dot get role parameters euro stocks. Hmm. Roll cycle parameters. Hold roll cycle HMUZ. Priced roll cycle HMUZ. Roll offset day minus five. Carry offset one. Approx expiry offset 15. The Euro, the, the, the Eurex website says Euro stocks 50 futures have the following delivery months, December, March, June, September. Google tells me that futures exchanges have a single letter code that represent delivery months. December is Z, March is H, June is M, September is U. H-M-U-Z, H-M-U-Z. So I'm quite sure that's not a coincidence. Not sure about the rest here. Perhaps my guess was that approximate expiry offset 15 might mean that the the specific dates within these expiry months generally happens to be around the 15th of the month, but I'm not sure yet what that what all of this means. Let's look at the method gets get rolls per year. I am predicting that for Euro stocks it will be four because hold roll cycle refers to four distinct delivery months so if you are holding for a year i suppose you will be rolling four times the answer is four so i perhaps my understanding is roughly right let's look at the method get instrument currency well it's, it's, it does what it says on the tin for euro stocks the native currency is euros Let's look at the method get instrument raw carry data. Data dot get instrument raw carry data euro stocks. We've seen these columns before: price, carry, price contract, carry contract. And as before, I am not familiar enough with carry to really understand what this would be used for yet. Let's look at the method get raw cost data. It returns cost data for, in this case, Euro stocks. Slippage is 0 0.37, so I presume it reflects on average the degree to which you expect your price to be a bit less favorable in the price you thought you were going to get on a given trade. Block commission is equal to two. My guess is that we are assuming a two euro transaction cost for buying or selling a single contract. So that's just my guess. I'm not sure why, therefore, per trade commission would be equal to zero. Let's look at the method get value of block price move. The description of this method is how much is a one dollar move worth in value terms? For euro stocks, the answer is 10. In the context of futures, I presume. The description for this method should read, how much is a single point movement worth in value terms? For euro stocks, the answer to this is 10 euros, which is the value of a one point movement. Incidentally, a single tick on euro stocks is a movement of half a point, which is worth five euros. So two ticks would be one point, which would be 10 euros. So I think that's explaining why we have 10 here. Let's look at the method get FX for instruments. Apparently, it gets the FX rate between the FX rate for the instrument and the base currency. I'm going to specify my base currency as GBP. Google tells me it costs 85 pence to buy one euro at the moment, so I would expect 0 0.85 to be the result when I call this method in respect of euro stocks. And the answer is about 0 0.85. But usefully, this method returns the historic FX rates 
small thing to note, this particular series starts from September 1999. So that's a whistle-stop tour of the methods associated with this particular object that we imported at the very start, which was CSV Futures Sim Data.